Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Texas Gulf Coast gets ready for Tropical Storm Nicholas, which is expected to bring heavy rain and flooding. Plus, an update on a big recall election in California that has the potential to uproot the state's Democratic governor. Outside with live cam, as predicted, the humidity returned yesterday. We have plenty of clouds out there, but all eyes are on Nicholas. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, September 13th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, it was pretty nice overall. It was, and uh, Mike is here. He has tons to talk about this morning. Let's get up to speed now on this tropical storm in the Western Gulf. We are already starting to see some of the outer rain bands move into just you know way, way down to the, the south and east. And also what's interesting too is when they sent the uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there, they found the center a little bit different in a little bit different spot, a little bit mm -hmm. further to the north. So it's kind of moved up the timeline just a little bit. But I mean, when it's all said and done, it just means we'll still have rain around here. It's just going to be coming in perhaps a little bit sooner. Uh, lots of clouds right now and <clears throat> excuse me, this is what it looks like on radar. You can see a couple of other showers down there right around Atascosa County and obviously more down to the southeast and they're kind of sweeping on in here. And again, these are sort of the northern and northwestern bands and the center of circulation is down here just to the south and east of Brownsville. Uh, 60 mile per hour winds as of right now and the forecast is taking it pretty much straight to the north and then bending off to the northeast. So it's along the coast and then Houston. We're going to be sort of on the edge of everything. As as of right now with the, the current path. Now down to the uh, south and east, we do have tropical storm watches for our eastern counties, including uh, Carnes, Gonzales, Lavaca, and then tropical storm warnings down there along the coast, and also flash flood watches right there along the coast. Because looking at uh, probably four, six inches of rain, and then the heavier amounts, and also the storm surge on top of that. and. But folks in the hill country, you may not actually see any rain from this just because of the path that it is taking. We're going to be technically on the drier side of this storm. 75 degrees right now. Yeah, a whole different story than what we had Friday, Saturday morning. And the humidity, of course, is back. It did come back, as Mark was talking about, late, late Saturday night and early Sunday morning. Saturday was just a great day. Yesterday, it was pretty darn sticky out there. Mold is moderate and uh, light amounts fall elm, ragweed and pigweed. Temperature is going to be staying pretty steady this morning. We'll have a few of those showers primarily to the east and everything with the forecast today talking about rain. You just got to tag it with the word, the phrase primarily to the east. Showers and thunderstorms after school. We will see more developing just a few out to the west. The heaviest rain off to the east. How much longer will this last? What is in behind once Nicholas moves on out? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect in a road rage shooting that put one man in the hospital. The incident happened last night on the north side while two vehicles involved were driving on the access road of I-10. Police say a vehicle drove up to a truck and someone inside started firing shots. Part of the truck was damaged and the driver was hit once in the back. Police found that man on West Wildwood, not far from Blanco Road and Fresno. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Out of California and the high stakes election tomorrow with national consequences. Democrats are fighting to hold on to the governor's office, but a popular talk radio host is trying to make sure that doesn't happen. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the details. This morning, the recall race in California entering the final stretch. Today, President Biden will campaign with Governor Gavin Newsom as a last push to motivate voters before Tuesday's election. The contrast and the stakes could not be higher. This election is a matter of life and death. Public health is on the ballot. If more than 50 percent of Californians vote to recall Newsom in Tuesday's special election, the opponent with the most votes becomes the next governor. Leading the polls among Newsom's opponents is conservative radio host Larry Elder. The first things I'm going to do is repeal the uh, the, the requirement for state workers uh, that they have to uh, be tested once a week and they have to wear masks at work. I don't think the science supports that. Elder criticizing Newsom's response to the pandemic, suggesting his policies have been too restrictive and refusing to answer whether he'll accept the results of tomorrow's election. So many people are angry with what's going on in California. So many people are going to vote to have him recalled. I'm not worried about fraud. The latest polls are promising for Newsom. According to polling website 538, about 56 percent of California voters plan to vote to keep Newsom in office. 46 other candidates are on the ballot, including Caitlyn Jenner. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. 
Well, the U.S. marked the solemn 20th uh, September 11th anniversary over the weekend. North Korea was testing, fi test firing rather, long range missiles. North Korea's state run news agency claims it successfully test fired a new type of long range cruise missile Saturday and Sunday. The missiles are reported to have successfully hit targets more than 900 miles away. North Korea says the new weapons system has been developed over the past two years. The Biden administration and South Korea have yet to formally respond to the weekend uh, long range missile tests. Three Republican presidential prospects have sharply condemned President Joe Biden's handling of the end of the war in Afghanistan. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and former Vice President Mike Pence all attended a political event in Nebraska this weekend. During the event, they called the administration's conduct of the U.S. withdrawal weak. DeSantis said America's ad adversaries do not fear President Biden as they did former President Donald Trump. Senator Cruz commented that Biden is seen as weak and ineffective in the wake of the withdrawal. Meanwhile, Pence says the chaos and the deadly suicide bombings at the Kabul's airport never had to happen. Right now, 436, about 75 degrees. Coming up next, a big weekend for the Houston Texans. Plus, the UTSA Roadrunners are celebrating a shutout. Highlights are next in Morning Sports. Outside with live cam, our weather team has you covered this week as we're tracking Tropical Storm Nicholas. And the rest of your forecast will be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back. Houston Texans face a new look Jacksonville Jaguars and believe it or not Texans strike first. Houston converts four times on third down. Their first drive is Mark Ingram scores from out a yard out seven nothing Texans. Each one lead 27 seven at the half. Texans defense takes over from there. By the time the fourth quarter rolled around Houston got three picks that matches what Houston had all of last season. Nice win for the Houston Texans and here is your final score. Texans beat the Jaguars 37 to 21 after the game. Texans talked about how important this win was since there's been nothing but negative press about the team since last season. The only noise that matters to this franchise and this team is the noise inside this building in this room. And that's the only noise that's mattered to us. That's the reason, as I said before, when we went out and played this game today and if we did things the right way, we'd have a chance to win the game. And we did that today and we won. Since day one, Coach Kelly has made it, made it important that we not focus on just the outside perception or what the outsiders say. And I think that was... Um, that was something that the guys leaned on in the locker room, uh, just playing for one another, not necessarily doing it for anything outside of what's in the locker room. All right, next Sunday, Texans travel to Cleveland to take on the Browns, who lost in a heartbreaker to KC yesterday. Kickoff set for noon at First Energy Stadium. Meanwhile, Dallas will be taking on the Chargers following the Cowboys' loss to Tampa Bay. That game is Sunday at 325 at SoFi Stadium. Saturday night, one to remember for UTSA as the Roadrunners return home to a big Alamo Dome crowd and put on quite a show. Senior Sheldon Jones got the home team off to a fast start with a 76-yard punt return and touchdown in the first quarter. Uh, just the second in program history, running back Sincere McCormick scored a pair of touchdowns in the first half, but becoming UTSA's all-time leading rushing touchdown leader with 21. And the defense pitched in the first shutout in program history, including a fumble return touchdown in the second quarter. UTSA's 54-0 victory versus Lamar was one to remember. Man, it feels great. You, you can't even bring it to words to how I feel right now, how we feel right now. It's just amazing to be a part of. Everybody was on time. Nobody was late. They all had their notes. They're just sitting up in their chairs, eyes on their coaches. You know, I've just done this for a long time. You can tell when you're not very mature. We're just not like that. Now, for two weeks now, we've only done this two weeks. I say that. They haven't been that way for me in a long time. They've been buttoned up for a long time. Next up, UTSA will host Middle Tennessee on Saturday at 5 p.m. And then the Trinity Tigers open their season in dominant fashion, defeating McAllister at home this weekend, 64 to nothing. Quarterback Tucker Horn threw for 332 yards and six touchdowns. Next up, Tigers take on Texas Lutheran on Saturday at 1 p.m. And time now is 442 and about 75 degrees out there. We have all heard that donating blood can save a life. We're going to introduce you to a young woman who's alive today thanks to generous blood donations. Up next, there's a new twist in the murder mystery involving a roadside shooting in South Car of a South Carolina lawyer whose wife and son were killed earlier this year.
And welcome back. It's 445. There are new developments in the roadside shooting of a South Carolina lawyer whose wife and son were murdered earlier this year. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new twist in the Murdoch family murder mystery. Clashing reports on the September 4th roadside shooting of South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch, an incident report released by the Hampton County Sheriff's Office claiming there were no visible injuries. Murdoch's team releasing further details of the injuries, saying he had entry and exit wounds, his skull fractured, which led authorities to correct the report. All eyes have been on the Murdoch family since the brutal unsolved murders of wife Maggie and 22-year-old son Paul this past June. Are they breathing? No, ma'am. My wife and my son. And what is your name? My name is Alec Murdoch. Please hurry. You the one of them moving. And we'll have the very latest on this unfolding mystery coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. A young South Texas woman who suffers from a blood disorder is hoping her story inspires others to become blood donors. Japanese Gray has her story and how her life has impacted others, especially her mother. I love cooking. I like being in the kitchen. 19-year-old Naomi Hennessy definitely knows her way around a kitchen. When I get my degree, I want to work in the hotel and become a chef and work my way up to higher position. <laughs> Naomi is your ordinary young woman studying culinary arts at St. Philip's College. But she wouldn't have this ordinary life if it wasn't for the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. The fact that those units have been donated by wonderful, healthy people, we are incredibly grateful. Naomi has thalassemia, an autoimmune disease that prevents her from making red blood cells. I've seen her when she's when her, she's really low and needs blood now. Her mother, Annette Hennessy, adopted Naomi from China, even after being told Naomi wasn't expected to live past the age of 14. She pulled me aside and explained to me that that my daughter was going to die. And did I really want to go through with this adoption? You know, spoiler, she's 19. <laughs> she's fine. <laughs> she's not dying anytime soon. But that's because in China, they don't have a good blood supply. Before coming to America, Naomi was only getting a couple of units of blood a year, going months without a transfusion. Now, as an American citizen since age 10, she gets at least 40 units a year. Let's go get blood every three weeks. By the end of this year, she would have had 300 transfusions. And while she receives blood, her mother gives it. I have to donate. I have to donate for her. I have to donate for the guy down the street that's got cancer. I have to donate for the girl around the corner that has sickle cell anemia. Somebody needs that blood. The family knows firsthand what it's like when there is a blood shortage. Both Naomi and her mother are hoping their story encourages people to donate blood when they can. Each bag is there to help somebody out. You'll never know who needs the blood and who needs it right now. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Japhne Gray. Switching gears 448. Mike, I brought my umbrella into the building today. Just in case. Good idea. It is a good idea, yeah. Mine's in my car. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to run out and get it for you? I mean, maybe. Because okay. so, uh, we do have a couple of showers, and, and not to, to chuckle about this, because we are going to see, well, some folks are going to see some rain. Obviously, off to the east, it's going to be way too much. There's nothing out there right now, and most of the morning commute uh, is going to be on the, the drier side. We will have a couple of showers. As you can see, there are a couple of them right now, uh, right around, uh, say, southern Atascosa County. And then more of these showers coming in there toward Carn City. Obviously, a whole lot more down to the east and down to the uh, southeast. And there you can just about see this is kind of the, the extent of the, the range of the radar down there. But the kind of the, the northern edge of the sort of the center of circulation of that storm. And these are the bands that are sweeping on in. Good view on the water vapor imagery. So we've got the really, really dry air off to the west. That's that darker shade of gray. And then obviously here are the clouds being thrown out ahead of Nicholas and the center of the storm down here to the, the south. And this you can almost then fill this in with rain over the next couple of days. 
not much off to the west and more obviously off to the east near the center of that storm. Here's uh, the short range computer model and it's got showers and a few storms developing throughout the morning and obviously the majority of the rain off to the east and we'll have a few more later on today. And this one is keeping things a lot more confined off to the east. Um, and again, you can't take any single one computer model and take that as written in stone because different models have different uh, different solutions to them and all also, things can alter a little bit. They can change. You know, the exact path of this can change over the course of really the next 12 to 24 hours. Here's uh, what the latest numbers are. Again, 60 mile per hour winds gust to 70, and it is forecast to remain as a, a tropical storm. But again, tropical storm hurricane, you know, really the, when you think about it, the difference between the two is one mile per hour in sustained wind strength. So there really is no difference as far as that's concerned. It is going to be a huge rainmaker. And it is forecast to still hug the coast and, like I said, not really gain any more strength. Once it makes land, it is going to start to weaken a little bit. And as always the case, now even though we will have some, and we are seeing the wraparound showers, the drier side of the storm, or the let's say the, the wetter side of the storm, we'll start with that, is on the right side in relation to its direction of travel. So this is where all the rain is going to be, and that's why even portions of the hill country probably won't see any rain from this. It is going to continue up to the north and then work its way off off to the northeast over the course of the next about 48 hours. And so we do have the hurricane watches there uh, along the coast, tropical storm warnings, and then tropical storm watches for some of our eastern counties, Carnes, uh, Gonzales, Lavaca, and then there along I-10 and over in toward Houston. And that's going to be through Tuesday evening. And rainfall amounts are going to be getting um, by the way, even flash flood watches there along the coast. Rainfall amounts, obviously the heaviest is going to be well off to the east and just uh, an inch or less west of San Antonio. So this will definitely be uh, one of those where there's a steep gradient as far as rain. Way too much east, hardly anything off to the west. 82 degrees, couple of showers, couple of thunderstorms around the area. And again, take this and tag the line with primarily off to the east on all of the uh, the forecasts as far as the rain is concerned. 86 for a high temperature today. Again, showers and thunderstorms. We will, thanks to the clouds, stay below normal tomorrow as well. Rain chances will definitely continue to sort of die off. Just a few of them scattered about. There's a little bit of leftover moisture around here. Temperatures, though, even going into the end of the week, are going to be on the warm side. We're looking at about 90 now for the average, the normal, and then a few more showers around here, perhaps by Sunday. And by the way, Justin is going to be heading down to the coast later on today. So In he's going to have some storm chaser. Reports. Yes, yep. so later we're going to move some so. weather people around, but that's the luxury of yep. having a, a decent sized weather staff. Yes, indeed. But uh, folks along the coast, if you got places down there, I mean, it's going to you're going to get hit pretty hard with this thing with the rain. You bet. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 453, about 75 degrees. And still had a big moment for Drake on the Billboard charts. And we're going to take a look at the weekend box office. Marvel's latest movie still leading the box office, plus Drake is dominating the Billboard charts. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. The Ten Rings gave our family power. Marvel Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings repeats in the box office top spot in week two of release, earning another $35.8 million. Is this what you wanted? That puts its total domestic take at $145.6 million so far, making it the fourth highest grossing film of the year, with time remaining to claim the top spot from Black Widow. I'm saying thanks. A third place bow for the horror flick Malignant, about $5.6 million there. <laughs> Titus Burgess returns this week as guest host of ABC's Bachelor in Paradise. He says he wasn't necessarily a fan of the show before the gig, but now... It's, it's watching some of the uh, more awkward moments. It's like watching a car wreck. Like, you know it's about to happen. You know someone's heart's about to break, but I can't stop watching. Okay, all right, that's fine. Drake just scored his 10th Billboard number one album with Certified Lover Boy, with the biggest debut sales numbers in over a year. And Tyler Perry's 52 Monday... And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 457 and it's about 75 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the Food and Drug Administration working around the clock to make COVID vaccines available to younger children. We'll get an update on when officials say they might be available. Plus the newest iPhone said to be officially announced today with a lot more storage for all your photos, videos, apps, and games. We're gonna have a preview coming up in Tech Bytes. 
And checking the roads with Transguide right now. We've got a few cars out there right now, but it's still awfully early. That was 281 at Hildebrand. There's 90 at 36th Street. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio, ready to go on duty and keep you updated on the morning commute all morning long. We have two hours of news, weather and traffic coming up next. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now, all eyes on the Texas Gulf Coast as the state gets ready for Tropical Storm Nicholas. The FDA out with a new warning for vaccines in children under the age of 12. I'm Alex Rochet in Washington coming up a timeline on when your youngster could be vaccine eligible. And starting the morning a little humid out there. We're at 75 degrees and expecting some rain. And a good morning to you. It's Monday. It is September 13th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a, a great weekend. Uh, it was pretty nice on Saturday. Sunday got a little warm there. Texas is already responding to the severe weather threats along the Gulf Coast due to Tropical Storm Nicholas. And Governor Greg Abbott is ordering the Texas State Operations Center to increase its readiness to level two. So preparations along the coast are already underway. Several services have been activated like swift water boat rescues, uh, ground transportation platoons with high profile vehicles and the Texas Emergency Medical Task Force. Hurricane Nicholas, excuse me, Tropical Storm Nicholas is expected to bring in significant rainfall and flooding to much of the Texas coast. But what can we expect in the San Antonio area? Let's go ahead and check in with Mike to find out. Good morning, everyone. We're going to be on the sort of western edge of, of any rain here in town. Obviously in the hill country then. You may not see anything, but obviously down to the east and to the southeast, you're going to see a whole bunch. And looking at that picture, those clouds arguably are from Nicholas right now. We have got uh, temperatures that are and well, 75 degrees. The dew point stands at 70 and we are going to be seeing uh, some of these. First of all, some of the uh, outer bands of rain, which are already starting to work their way into the area. And as you can see, kind of sweeping up here from the coast. Clear skies out in portions of the hill country and that rain will continue to uh, move on in here. Here's a closer look with radar as of right now, even around Atascosa County, Carnes County, a couple of these showers, obviously a lot more down here to the uh, south and east. And there's another good view of all the rain, which is going to continue to to get kind of pushed on in here. Yes, we will get the wraparound rain from this, but as with any tropical system, <coughs> excuse me, the rainiest side of it is in the eastern or the, the right hand side in relation to the direction of travel. And this is pretty much going to be taking almost a straight northwardly and then northeastwardly movement right now. 60 mile per hour wind. So it is a, a moderate tropical storm. And again, it continues that northward movement and then kind of bends off to the east. And so we are going to be on the relatively drier side of that storm. There are uh, tropical storm watches and advisories posted all there along the, the coast. We're going to go through those in a couple of minutes. Warm. We've got a couple of showers off to the east and to the southeast this morning, and more of those are going to continue to kind of move inland throughout the day. Showers and thunderstorms, about a 40, almost 50% chance of rain here in town. Much lesser chances of rain out to the west. Obviously, greater rain threat and heavier rain off to the east. Mid 80s today, and then a few more showers and a couple of thunderstorms tomorrow. Rain chances will continue to drop off as that storm works its way on out of here. We'll still have a couple of lingering ones, even throughout the week. You can't really really rule it completely out, but it is definitely going to be on the warm and warmer side, getting up uh, back up toward the mid 90s by the end of the week. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Mike. Happy Monday. Uh, taking a look at Transguide right now. The roads are looking pretty smooth from these shots. You can see Loop 410 at Callahan. Uh, pretty smooth starts and some of these shots here at Transguide. Uh, we have not spotted any issues again from these shots, but keep in mind there are hundreds of cameras out there watching the roads and we're trying to keep track of the things that are happening out on the highways and byways. But as we take a look at the map, uh, some paving work to be on the lookout for. This is up towards I-35 northbound at FM 1103. There's actually a double main lane closure in both directions. Uh, it happened overnight, uh, should be continuing until Friday. That's September 17th. Uh, this is actually from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. But right now you can see that we are seeing a slowdown there in the map. Traffic moving at 35 miles per hour, backed up about three miles there. So just keep that in mind if you're heading up to New Braunfels or maybe Austin earlier this 
this morning or later this morning. Hopefully that construction should be wrapping up pretty soon. And as we zoom out of the map, we see that we have a pretty green start, but we did have a few crashes overnight that did happen off 281 and Isom. And we do have a crew heading to an incident off US 90 to give us some updates out there. Either which way, use some caution, especially when you see those flashing lights out there. Right now, the inbound times though are looking pretty good. If you plan on traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments, as you head out the door, 25 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie, 24 on 281 and Bolverde. And we're looking at just 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels. So that construction is not really impacting the southbound lanes. Pretty dark shot out there. Loop 1604 at Tradesman, at Loop 410 at Callahan. Off to a smooth start so far. But again, we're going to be watching those issues closely on the roads to keep you informed. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is in critical condition after crashing her vehicle overnight. It happened just after one this morning in the 10,000 block of Highway 281 South near Isom Road. Police say when rescue crews arrived, they found the woman unresponsive in the vehicle with a serious head injury. She was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police did not say what caused that crash. This morning, latest report shows that one in four new COVID cases are in children. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest on child vaccinations. This morning, the FDA is out with a new warning to parents. Don't get children under 12 the COVID vaccine until the agency gives approval, saying in part, children are not small adults. The former head of the FDA laying out his best case scenario for when the shots will be available for children. You could potentially have a vaccine available to children age 5 to 11 by Halloween if everything goes well. Right now, children make up one in four new infections. Across the U.S., the Delta variant's not slowing down. ICU beds in seven states are running out, leaving little room for other emergencies. Ray Demonia's family says it took calls to 43 hospitals across three states to get the 73-year-old a cardiac ICU bed. He died in a facility in Mississippi 200 miles from his Alabama home. His relatives writing in his obituary, please get vaccinated to free up resources for non-COVID related emergencies. President Biden's mandating businesses with 100 or more employees to either require vaccinations or enforce weekly testing. The U.S. Surgeon General defending the move. Let's help us get through this, keep our kids in school, keep our economy going and give us a peace of mind. But the Republican governors of at least 19 states vowing to fight back. This is an unprecedented uh, assumption of federal uh, mandate uh, authority that really disrupts and divides the country. Vaccine mandates already resulting in resignations at one rural New York State hospital. The number of resignations received leaves us no choice but to pause delivering babies. Further south in New York City today, anyone over the age of 12 must show proof of vaccination for things like indoor dining, gyms and theaters. Also happening in New York City today, more than 80,000 municipal employees are returning to their workplaces. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, following President Joe Biden's vaccine mandate, one local lawyer is weighing in on the many questions that people have about the legality of that order. So those questions include, can someone get fired who decides not to get the vaccine? Kelly Cabetta with the Cabetta Law Group says if a company puts a new policy in writing, it would be difficult to challenge. Another question is, what if I work remotely? Cabetta says the vaccine requirements should be connected to job related duties. It's going to be interesting is where individuals have an employment agreement. It was written and signed at a time where COVID was not in, on anybody's radar. And now the company is wanting to implement a new policy. Um, and that's where it really comes down to whether or not the um, mandate or the new policy to be vaccinated is genuinely um, connected to the job. And when it comes to unemployment benefits that may be contingent on a person being let go due to not getting the vaccine, she says it's up to the Texas Workforce Commission to decide on a case by case basis. Right now it's just about 509, about 75 degrees. And still ahead, we are getting ready to get our first look at the first iPhone with one terabyte of storage. And up next, automakers are still seeing financial problems right now. How Ford's planning to adapt after a $2 billion loss. And taking a look outside with live cam, 75 degrees for now and no rain for now, but we are expecting some because of Tropical Storm Nicholas. We'll be right back. 512 on your Monday morning. Welcome back. The auto industry dealing with obstacle after obstacle. We now know that Ford is ending production in India. 
And as Max Massey shows us, the company is taking a hit of $2 billion. Ford issued a statement which read roughly 4,000 employees will be laid off and manufacturing will end immediately in India. The Ford CEO, Jim Fairley, said the move was difficult but necessary to achieve long-term growth. The CEO added Ford has accumulated more than $2 billion of operating losses over the last 10 years and demand for new vehicles has been much weaker than forecasted. Ford has long struggled in India, which was the world's fifth largest auto market last year. Ford began operations there in 1995, has invested more than $2 billion in the country over the last 25 years, but it has barely picked up any of the market share. The Federation of Automobile Dealers Association states that Ford's control of the market stood at roughly 1.8% in July. That's actually down from nearly 2.1% a year ago. Ford is the latest U.S. car maker to cut back its India business in recent years. Remember, GM announced in 2017 they would stop selling cars in the country. India will remain Ford's second largest salaried workforce globally. The company said it plans to expand an 11,000 employee business solutions team in India that is actually focused on engineering, technology, and business operations. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 513, 75 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you about Instagram's latest update that would let you see your favorites first. Plus, Google adding more online storage for users up to five terabytes. We'll tell you how much it will cost you. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. For three! So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In today's Tech Bytes, new details on the new iPhone, which is expected to be unveiled tomorrow. The iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will reportedly be the first ever to come with one terabyte of storage. For reference, that's the same as 1,000 gigs. The phones are also expected to have improved cameras. And Google One has added another storage plan. The new five terabyte option goes for $25 a month. The new plan is also available for $250 a year. Free unlimited storage for Google Photos came to an end in June. Instagram is said to be working on a new feature that allows users to create a list of their favorite accounts. Up to 30 accounts on that list would reportedly appear higher in a user's feed. Instagram says the feature is still being developed, but when it is, be sure to favorite ABC News. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. All the latest on that tropical storm coming up in just a moment. But for now, we see some flashing lights out there on I-35 and Powell. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, in just a matter of minutes, it got pretty busy uh, on our roadways here. This is a shot from Transkai 35 at Powell. You definitely see lots of flashing lights out there. Heavy police presence, first responder presence, and we also are seeing a possible crash. It is being reported out there that first responders are working to clear. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you where that is being reported and jump right over here. I-35 southbound near Pendleton Avenue, not causing any issues right now in terms of delays with traffic, but either which way you just saw that scene so you're going to want to use some caution driving through that area later this morning but uh, bringing your attention down here we do have a crash reported off state highway 16 at south zazamoto we are seeing a delay right now we're slowly build up of traffic and we do have a crew out there live on the ground that will get us more information later this morning but uh, be on the lookout for that again this is off state highway 16 at south zazamoto uh, as we mentioned in just a matter of moments the issues are really picking up now in our roadways as you can see uh, we do have those crashes reported and still have those slowdowns reported off the i-35 Five northbound where they're doing some paving work. So you're going to want to be extra cautious before heading out the door this morning. And if this is in your route, again, move over and slow down for those first responders. We're going to be giving you all those updates here on GMS 8. Mark Stephanie. All right. Thank you, Steve. And make a part of your Monday plan to download that free KSAT hurricane tracker. Yep.
or if not that, just the uh, the app because you can get radar on there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hurricane will you know, one. give you all the, the latest, but you know, figuring out where the rain is uh, because we will start to see more rain moving into the area as the morning rolls on, and obviously later on this afternoon. 75 right now, whole different uh, story. You know, we had 60 Saturday morning. It was really nice with the humidity that was low, but of course the humidity came back in. It's not like steam bath out there, but just enough, obviously. So here's the latest on radar. This is just some uh, kind of clutter, if you will, around the radar site up there in New Braunfels. A couple of uh, light sprinkly showers in Pleasanton. We may actually see a few of these showers, you know, trying to develop here in town, especially as uh, some of this uh, this flow coming in here off the the, the uh, Gulf kind of runs into the escarpment. You sometimes see some of those little sprinkles, especially there on the uh, the northwest side of town. Uh, a few showers around Carn City and then down there along 37, obviously a whole lot more around Victoria and down Corpus Christi, further on down to the south. Obviously, there is Nicholas well down uh, just to the southeast of Brownsville, and all this is going to be sweeping inland. Yes, we will get the wraparound rain from this, but with the way the pat the storm is moving just about straight up to the north. That is going to keep the heaviest rain on the east side of that storm. So here's the computer model. And as you can see, more showers, thunderstorms divide the, the viewing area in half and very limited rain off to the west, if at all, and a lot more obviously to the east. And that storm will continue its northward movement, almost taking a beeline in toward Houston. So Houston's going to be inundated once again with a lot of very, very heavy rain from this storm. And here's another look at the path, and it does Look like it should make land somewhere uh, to the south and east of Victoria, maybe around Baffin Bay sometime later on today and then continue up primarily straight to the north. Again, the rainiest side is going to be to the east side, the drier side off to the west and again, Folks in the hill country, you may not even see much of anything. Spaghetti plots, obviously the majority of these computer models do have it on that path. Yes, there's always one or two that don't necessarily agree with the rest of the group, but that is highly unlikely that it would take that westward path. We still have to obviously keep watching this as it uh, continues to move northward over the next 24 to uh, 36 hours. Heaviest rainfall risk, excessive rainfall risk, very high off to the east and east of 35 pretty much a very marginal risk for any excessive rain. Uh, an inch, perhaps two inches in some of our eastern counties, obviously heavier amounts further off to the east as that storm continues to work its way uh, on land and then up to the northeast away from us. 82 degrees today at noon, showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Most of those, again, will be to the east and then 86 for a high temperature. So we are going to be below normal thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to some of the rain around here. I think the same thing tomorrow, although much lesser chances of rain. We'll still have a few showers left over then temperatures are going to start to go back up. So we'll we'll be on the warm side for the latter half of the week. A stray shower here or there just because there's going to be some leftover moisture and then a slightly better chance for some rain on Sunday. You guys are really worried about the Texas coast because this yeah. is such a slow mover. Yeah, it, it is. And there's going to obviously going to be the storm surge. There's going to be heavy rain, you know, mm -hmm. probably four to six inches of rain and then even higher, you know, localized amounts on that storm surge about to say two to four feet or so along. So it's not going to be just a, a massive situation, but you know, in places down there along the coastal plain or eastern counties, so you're going to be getting way, way too much rain and obviously some some flooding in some spots too. So yeah, something to watch out for. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 523 about 75 degrees and coming up next in your morning spotlight. Kirsten Dust adds one more to the family plus Beyonce and Jay-Z form a scholarship fund. Actress Kirsten Dunst welcomes baby number two and Beyonce and Jay-Z give back. Here's CNN's Rick Domagella with the Hollywood Minute. Kirsten Dunst welcomes a new addition to the family. The actress revealed to the New York Times that she and Jesse Plemons had their second child, a son named James Robert. The couple who got engaged in 2017 already have a three-year-old son named Ennis. You can't wear that to the ball. I know. The power of the Fab G. More than one million U.S. households watched Cinderella on Amazon Prime over its debut weekend, according to Samba TV, reportedly making Amazon call it the biggest musical of 2021. Star Billy Porter says the film's theme of transformation is one that speaks to everyone. Art has the power to transform, and us being in this moment, in this transformative time, with this transformative story is important. 
Beyonce and Jay-Z give back. The superstar couple have partnered with jewelry brand Tiffany & Company on the Love Scholarship Program. Tiffany & Company has pledged $2 million in scholarship funding in the arts and creative fields at five historically black colleges and universities. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And time now is 527 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, a not so scary Halloween. Kids between the ages of 5 and 11 may be able to get vaccinated sooner than you might think. Plus, we're checking on how San Antonio businesses are doing following the recent COVID surge and its effect on the local economy. And our first look at our Taco Tuesday edition of KSAT Explains comes out this week where we highlight the best things about tacos here in San Antonio. And she's known to many as the angel of the Alamo ahead on GMSA at 6. We're going to introduce you to an activist who was committed to preserving San Antonio's history. Making headlines this morning could be sooner than later when it comes to vaccines being approved for younger children. We have details coming up. And the Texas Gulf Coast getting ready for Tropical Storm Nicholas, this is a live look at Galveston. Mike is standing by with an update. And here at home, Mike says some clouds from the uh, outer sections of Nicholas are over South Texas right now. Will we get rain here in the Alamo City? We're talking about that coming up. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Monday. It is September 13th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend. And today we are expecting that rain. Let's get an update on Nicholas and what could happen here and particularly down on the Texas coast. Mike. Yeah, Texas coast is going to be uh, getting a pretty good wall up there with a lot of rain, six inches or more. There's going to be some storm surge. Obviously, uh, the way this path is taking it more off to the east and further, uh, say, in toward Houston than down along, um, say, from Corpus Christi area. 75 degrees right now, dew points at 70. So this number, which was down in the 50s Tuesday morning, still was pleasant uh, Saturday, but then obviously the humidity came back in here yesterday. Northeasterly wind at about three miles per hour and uh, got a couple little sprinkly showers again. Uh, Atascosa County, Carnes County, working its way almost into Wilson County, and then further off down to the uh, south and east. And obviously, there's the the brunt of the rain. And the center of the storm is just to the southeast of Brownsville. It's going to be moving just about straight up to the north. 60 mile per hour winds right now. That's the sustained winds, and the path is going to be taking it again almost straight to the north. Last half hour, I apologize, I misspoke. I said later on today it was going to reach uh, McLean around Baffin Bay. I meant up around. Uh, Matagorda Bay or San Antonio Bay up to the north, not south of Corpus Christi. My apologies on that one. And it is not really going to gain any more strength. Obviously, when it moves over land, it's going to be losing a lot of strength. And the heaviest rain is going to be in the right-hand side in relation to its direction of travel. So that's going to be to the east of it. Yes, we will have and are seeing some wraparound showers from this right now, but we are going to be on the drier side, which means out in the hill country, it's going to be very limited rain or you may not see any rain at all. Mold is on the moderate side. Fall elm, ragweed, pigweed are all low. Showers and some thunderstorms. Obviously heavier amounts to the east, lesser amounts to the west. 82 at noon, 86 for a high temperature later on today. We'll still have a couple of showers left over. Today's going to be the best chance for rain. And then later on tonight as well, first part of the day tomorrow, then uh, just scattered here and there. And it's going to be warming back up actually on the warm side later latter half of the week. The Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. I just saw it at the corner of my eye a lot of flashing lights out there. Yeah, Mike, it's definitely a busy morning right now. Uh, for a Monday, I-35 at Powell Street. It's looking pretty crazy right now. Let's get a closer look from Transguide. Uh, we do have a lot of flashing lights out there, and you can see that a crash has been reported out there. First responders are working to clear this scene. It's been there for at least half an hour right now, so definitely use caution out over there. And as we bring you to the map here, uh, we do see that crash again located off I-35 southbound at Pendleton Avenue. Uh, seen a minor build up there in those southbound lanes of 35. So you're going to want to be extra cautious out there this morning. But unfortunately, this isn't the only crash that we've spotted so far. As we take you down here, though, to State Highway 16 at South Zazamoto, we are seeing a slow build up there. Uh, we can confirm that this is a deadly crash that first responders are working to clear. And in fact, our Katrina Weber is live there on the ground with more information to tell us what she's learned so far. Katrina. Well, good morning, Stephen. Uh, we just got a briefing from police a few minutes ago. I can confirm uh, or they have confirmed that there are two people who were killed in the crash. Two women who were in the car right here in the middle of the highway. Uh, this is where they ended up after being T-boned 
by an SUV. Uh, police say this is all preliminary, but this is what witnesses are telling them, that the driver of the SUV uh, was seen speeding down the highway. They say that she ran a red light and T-boned this car as it was making a turn onto South Zarzamora from Highway 16. Uh, police say the driver did not stay here at the scene. In fact, they went looking for her. They found her down the highway near the flea market here along Highway 16, and they took her into custody. That woman is on the way to the hospital. Police say they will do a mandatory blood draw to check for any type of intoxicants, any alcohol or whatever. But uh, again, she is going to be facing multiple charges if things work out the way that witnesses describe them. And again, two, wi two women in that car uh, were killed in this crash, which happened right around 4.30 this morning. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for the update there, Katrina. This morning, even as more kids are getting COVID-19, leading health experts say there could be a light at the end of the tunnel. CNN's Rick Conway has the latest on the push to get a vaccine authorized for kids 5 to 11 years old. We're seeing uh, infections uh, throughout every age group. You don't want to go through this. You, you don't. Infants and very young children, school-age children, and unvaccinated teenagers. Medical experts say early diagnosis is crucial. Better yet, prevention. Use masking and other measures to keep our children safe and reassure parents that help is on the way. Help in the form of a vaccine. Former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb is on Pfizer's board and Dr. James Versalovic is helping run children's trials. You could potentially have a vaccine available to children age 5 to 11 by Halloween. Uh, that is our goal, October. Uh, we are doing everything we can now to move these trials ahead, and they're moving ahead well. In the meantime, the FDA has made it clear parents need to wait on the formal authorization, saying, quote, children are not small adults, and the vaccine doses that are currently being studied in younger children are not necessarily the same vaccine doses that have been approved for other age groups. Right now, the FDA says clinical trials are still underway, but once the relevant portion is complete, it will work with the manufacturers to analyze the data. Then the manufacturer can submit for emergency use authorization. After that, the FDA will evaluate benefits and risks, a process they say could take just a matter of weeks. And in the face of Delta, every week, every day counts. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Today, President Joe Biden will promote his administration's use of the Defense Production Act to aid in wildfire preparedness in the western states. The president expected to survey wildfire damage in Idaho and California. Biden is trying to draw support for his massive $3.5 trillion spending plan by linking it to wildfires and social programs while visiting those two states as well as Colorado. Biden's trek also coincides with the recall election of California Governor Gavin Newsom. The president is set to appear with Newsom on the eve of tomorrow's vote. And the Coast Guard intercepted a sailboat crowded with Haitian refugees off the South Florida coast on Sunday. According to the agency's Twitter account, there were approximately 80 Haitian migrants on board the crowded vessel. The sailing vessel had almost made it to U.S. shores only 18 miles from Biscayne Bay near Miami. This comes after a massive earthquake a month ago and political turmoil, including the assassination of the island's president back in July. Time check, 538, about 74 degrees. And still ahead, if you need a new car seat or a booster seat, we're going to tell you about Target's latest trade-in event. And next, an update on how local companies and small businesses uh, are doing following the recent surge in coronavirus cases. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at a humid 74 degrees. But of course, our rain chances are going up as the day goes on. We're going to be checking in with Mike later on. Local companies and small businesses have been through a lot in these last 17 months. And with the recent uptick in cases, President Biden's vaccine mandate and the economic recovery, there are still questions on the horizon. The president and CEO of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce joined Leading SA to talk about it. Yes, we talked about a lot. We talked about the current local economy, small businesses, small companies, what they've had to deal with during this pandemic and what they're still dealing with. We talked about Hispanic Heritage Month and we talked about the bright future for San Antonio. We also talked about what comes next in terms of President Biden's executive order on vaccine mandates. Take a listen. Our goal is to ensure that our businesses have the resources and flexibility to continue to promote the vaccine 
without any experiencing any negative consequences. For example, having to pay fines that I know right now are being discussed um, per violation um, if one of their employees is not vaccinated under the mandate. Um, so we will wait and see, and we will remain uh, very vigilant in making sure that we've reviewed it and, and that we have that information ready to go for our members. You can watch the entire interview right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. for our next Leading SA segment. Guys, back to you. And time now is 542 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Do you like tacos? Of course you do. That's why we're <laughs> focusing on this delectable treat and how it ties into San Antonio culture. 545, a new episode of KSAT Explains is out tomorrow and it might make you a little hungry. This week, the KSAT Explains team is diving into San Antonio's taco culture. Myra Arthur gives us a preview. Whether they're puffy, street style, or served up for breakfast, San Antonio knows tacos. Tacos is what brings us together, so tacos involved, everybody gets along. The city is saturated with taco trucks and taquerias, some that have been staples here for decades. We've been open from 56. Same family, it's been passed on to different owners. We keep the recipes, we've been so many generations working here. They come in different styles with different types of meat. Piso, tripa, bistec, lengua, cabeza, suadero y pastor. And just when you think you know everything there is to know about San Antonio's taco scene, something new emerges. It's kind of like a half Asian, half Mexican taco. You can find tacos now of tikka masala chicken. You can find tacos of bulgogi beef. Food is a language that everyone speaks. You know, and fusing it together, it's just another way that we can all get together and share the same thing. A taco will feed the soul of every human being. If it's crafted right, it's perfection. Make no mistake about it, San Antonio is the culinary and cultural capital of Texas. Looks good. Tacos. Case it explains San Antonio taco culture will be available to stream on demand tomorrow on Taco Tuesday. We're going to live stream the episode at 7 p.m. on KSET.com, the KSET TV app, and KSET's Facebook page. We'll also post a full episode so you can watch it on demand. In your morning consumer headlines, United Airlines is taking a tough stance on employees who refuse to get a COVID vaccine shot due to religious beliefs. The carrier says those employees would be placed on indefinite unpaid leave from their job. The new guideline would begin on October 2nd. The airline says this policy would remain until it can better determine how those who are unvaccinated interact with customers and coworkers who are vaccinated. United says accommodations can be made for employees who have, quote, sincerely held religious beliefs, end quote, on a case by case basis. Target's big car seat trade-in is back. If your little ones start to outgrow their seat, Target will take it off your hands and give you 20% off coupon for a new one. The coupon is also good for other things too, including strollers, high chairs, and rockers. The trade-in is going on right now. will last uh, two weeks, ending September 25th. Target says it will take any car seat you have, even if it's damaged, and that includes seat bases, harnesses, and boosters. The coupons can be used through October 2nd. For more information, go online to Target.com. And for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos to see how things are shaping up on I-35 now. Yeah, it uh, looks like we had some good progress there, Mark and Seth. You can see we do still have some road flares, which does show that the shoulder lane was still blocked off there for a little while. But that crash that we told you about there along I-35 looks like it has since cleared out. Let's show you a different shot now. Uh, it's earlier, you saw a bunch of flashing lights out over there, and that was because first responders were working to clear that scene up. And it looks like they did it just on time because it is getting a little bit busier there off I-35 at Powell Street, but that crash was to Detected right here off I-35 southbound near Pendleton Avenue. Again, it does look like it is cleared. Traffic running pretty smoothly right now, but the big issue this morning is not going to be that crash. It's going to be the one happening here off State Highway 16 at South Zazamora. As you just heard from Katrina, two women unfortunately did die in this crash just hours earlier. So we are working to continue to bring you more information, and she'll be live with us a little bit later this morning on GMSA. But jumping up over here, though, we do have a stall off I-10 westbound at Hebner Road, not causing any issues, but it 
is shaping up to be a very busy start to the work week and the roadways. And we're of course, we're going to be watching things closely, especially that crash down there off state highway 16. Uh, but for now, just keep it, uh, keep it safe out there, guys. This is a shot at I 35 at Powell. Things are running smoothly there, but there's lots of tracks, so it's a busy morning for us here in the traffic lab. Yes, sir. Mike says the word of the day is Nicholas. Yes, yes indeed. And we're already starting to see the effects of it uh, for, from it. I should say these clouds are being pushed in from Nicholas as this rain. A little bit of clutter around the radar site right there. The only thing being detected uh, a couple of these showers in Atascosa County uh, down here just moving in up 181 into Wilson County. Not seeing anything yet in Floresville. And there may be, I mean, even a couple little uh, specks here and there in northern Atascosa County. So don't be surprised even in town if there's a little bit of some light rain, but the detectable rain obviously is further down to the uh, southeast. A lot of it around Corpus Christi, Rockport, Victoria, a bunch of rain, and then there's closer to the center of Nicholas. So here's what it looks like with the the dew point temperatures as well as the wind. We've got some humidity out there right now. Obviously, it came back up. Uh, we, it was very nice Friday, Saturday, yesterday. We got more humidity around here and wind is going to be primarily out of the east to southeast. Then tonight it's going to start to swing around more northeasterly and there's the center of circulation of Nicholas and that's going to work its way up to the northeast of us. We will temporarily get this flow coming in here out of the north, but it's not going to last all that long because we go into Wednesday and we're still going to keep some humidity around here, so that's going to keep things kind of on the mild side. And with this humidity sticking around here, that's going to keep the chance for uh, a couple of showers around pretty much each and every day, but much lower chances as we go into the latter half of the week. And the path is going to be taking it just to uh, the east of Corpus Christi, making landfall sometime. It looks like later on uh, late this afternoon, this evening around, say, Matagorda Bay, uh, San Antonio Bay, off to the east and then working its way up there. Now, there are hurricane watches posted from Rockport all the way up in toward Galveston and tropical storm warnings along the coastal plain and tropical storm watches that do include, say, Carnes County, Vivaca, uh, up in toward Gonzales County, and that is through the rest of today and tonight. Flash flood watches there along the coast. As far as rainfall amounts, you're going to be seeing probably uh, four or six inches of rain along the, the coast and the coastal plain and then some heavier amounts on top of that. And then there's going to be the storm surge on top of that. So even around um, Corpus Christi, uh, Ranzas Bay, about two to four feet and higher amounts there around San Antonio Bay and Matagorda Bay, about three to five feet as far as the uh, the storm surge is concerned. And again, that's going to continue to work its way up to the north. The storm will. And as far as rain, the majority obviously to the east, that storm continues moving up to the northeast in behind it. It's going to be very limited as far as rain throughout the kind of the middle part of the week. Still a few scattered showers here and there, and then I think we see another uh, disturbance moving in here by late in the weekend. Today, 82 at noon showers, couple of thunderstorms. Again, the majority to the east, lesser amounts to the west in parts of the hill country. You may see a lot more sunshine even than clouds. 86 degrees for a high temperature today, which is going to be about uh, four or five below normal showers and some thunderstorms. Heavy rain off to the east, and uh, that's going to be into this evening and late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Some leftover rain tomorrow. Rain chances do exist, but not great then the rest of the week. Temperature is going to be warm and it's going to be humid. Another shot of rain by Sunday. All right. Well, at least we get some rain chances in this area. Yes, hopefully so. You get some, obviously not too much, but uh, to the folks in the east and southeast, you're going to be getting, in, you know, some of those pockets of very heavy rain. So the closer you get to the coast, the heavier. Don't forget to download our free weather authority apps. Mm -hmm. very good. Time now, 553 and about 74 degrees. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Let's take a look. Pick three, three, five, seven, fireball five. De uh, daily four numbers, zero, eight, two, five, fireball eight. Cash five, we have one, four, five, 20, 29. And a lot of Texas, we have nine, 13, 16, 21, 26, 33. Your Powerball number is 20, 31, 38, 40, 49, Powerball 21, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday edition of GMA, the new warning from the FDA on vaccines for kids 5 to 11 years old. As more kids are going back to school this morning and the latest on President Biden's vaccine mandate and the resistance to it. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA.
If you look to the left of the boat, you'll see some very playful toucans. Disney's Jungle Cruise made its seventh weekend voyage, netting $2.4 million, while Candyman scared up $4.8 million. The horror yarn Malignant debuted in third on ticket sales of $5.6 million. Ryan Reynolds' video game-themed action comedy Free Guy leveled up from third to second place with $5.8 million, bringing its domestic box office total to $101.9 million. I'm not here to fight anybody. Okay, I'm looking for my sisters. Marvel's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings held on to first place in its sophomore weekend in theaters. The hero flick starring Simu Liu brought in $35.8 million for a two-week total of $145.6 million in North America. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damage. Jella. Ahead in our next hour at GMSA, we're going to have the latest on an overnight crash on the city's north side. And how about them Texans? Houston fans waking up happy this Monday morning. The team currently in first place in their division. We have highlights of their season opener against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Transguide right now, heavier traffic there at Tenet Proband. We do have some issues on the roads right now, including a working fatality accident. Stephen is tracking all that for you right here on GMSA. We'll be back at the top of the hour. The FDA out with a new warning for vaccines in children under the age of 12. I'm Alex Rochet in Washington. Coming up, a timeline on when your youngster could be vaccine eligible. This morning, one man is recovering after he was hit by a truck on the northwest side. We've got the details. And taking a look outside with a live cam here at home, we are starting at a humid 74 degrees. Of course, Mike is busy tracking Tropical Storm Nicholas. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And we will hear from Mike in a moment. He has a ton to talk about. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, September 13th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good weekend and now the chances of rain begin. That's right. Uh, the latest on Nicholas. Let's go straight to Mike and some of the clouds over us this morning are indeed from Nicholas. Yeah, you know, we had a couple of showers around yesterday and so the app all of a sudden said, hey, there's some rain, you know, near you. And uh, if you have the that's the best thing to do is is get that weather out the case weather app and or the hurricane app because you will get those, you know, advisories or the It'll pop up when there's any rain around here, and also you can check out uh, exactly where the uh, the tropical storm is. Right now, yes, these clouds are being thrown on in here from Nicholas, and we do have some rain that is being thrown into the area from Nicholas as well. A couple little sprinkly showers have been uh, showing up around, uh, say, maybe Atascosa County, a couple in, in Wilson County right there, obviously more down to the uh, southeast, and then a lot of it right there along the coast, Corpus Christi, in toward Port Aransas and there's more to come, but the center of the storm is going to move primarily straight up to the north. Right now, 60 mile per hour winds and it is um, moving to the north northwest at 14 miles per hour, but it is going to take that curve almost straight northwardly and then bend off to the northeast. So it will be making land looks like sometime late this afternoon or this evening around San Antonio Bay and or Matagorda Bay, and that's where some of the heaviest storm surge is going to be right now. It's forecast to be uh, roughly uh, two to four feet, say around Corpus Christi, a little bit higher than that, three to five feet further up to the north. And as far as rainfall potential, it's going to be obviously very heavy, half a foot down there along the coast and then further off to the east in toward Houston and east of there about 10 inches or more in San Antonio. We're going to be on kind of the the western fringes of it less than an inch of rain some folks in the hill country you may not get any rain at all from this but obviously the further east you go is going to be some of the uh, the heavier rainfall amounts as far as pollen mold is on the moderate side uh, little bits of fall elm ragweed and pigweed and throughout the day temperatures are in the mid 70s right now and are going to stay pretty steady this morning and we're not going to gain all that much not going to warm up all that much maybe about 10 to 15 degrees here or there 82 at noon and then 86 for a high temperature today. So we are going to be staying on the cooler side, obviously about five degrees below normal. Thanks to the cloud cover. Thanks to some of the rain around here. We will continue to have rain chances into tonight. Obviously greater chances to the east and some here and there throughout the, re the week, but rain chances will definitely start to go down. Temperatures, though, it's going to be warm and humid this week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos and boy, there's been 
been a lot going on so far. Yeah, lots to keep track of, Mike. Uh, right now, 37 at Houston looks pretty good so far, but these shots at Transguide only show a few glimpses of uh, what's happening right now on the roadways or some spots where cameras aren't catching those big issues. And as we take a closer look at the map, we do want to bring your attention to some stalls. Uh, this one here reported off I-10 westbound at Ebner Road. I just checked the shot there at Transguide. There is a camera that was pointed in that direction. It doesn't look like that's there anymore, so that's some good news out there, especially for that driver that was experiencing the trouble on the highway. But let's go ahead and jump down over here, though, to I-35 southbound at Chalmers Avenue, where we do have another stall reported. So these are popping up and clearing out. As always, check those vehicles before you hit the roadway. But the big issue right now is going to be down here off State Highway 16 at South Zazamora. A deadly crash happening hours earlier in the early hours of the morning, that is. And that is where we find our Katrina Weber there live, and she has all the information. What's going on? Well, good morning, Stephen. Uh, we have the, the northbound lanes that are closed on Highway 16 and will be for some time because we have accident investigators out here. This is a fatal crash. Two women killed. They were in this SUV that's right there in the middle of the highway. That's where they landed after police say they were T-boned by an SUV. Now, police are still investigating, but they say witnesses told them that they saw that SUV speeding down the highway. They say that it ran a red light and then T-boned that uh, vehicle, that sedan, as it was making a turn onto South Sarzamora. Both of the women who were killed were in the sedan. Now, the driver of the SUV, police say, didn't stick around. They found her walking down the highway uh, farther down by the flea market. And so they took her into custody, but they did take her to a hospital, uh, not necessarily for injuries, but to be checked out for possible intoxication. They say they're going to do a mandatory blood draw on that woman. So there could be some very serious charges to come. But again, two women, uh, we don't know their ages or anything about them just yet. Police still investigating, but they say two women in that SUV, uh, rather in the uh, sedan are the ones who were killed here this morning. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. One man's in the hospital after he was hit by a truck. It happened around 10 last night in the 2400 block of Babcock Road on the northwest side. San Antonio police say a man in his 40s tried to cross Babcock without using a crosswalk when he was hit by a driver in a truck that was not able to stop in time. The driver did stop to help. The man who was hit was taken to a hospital with severe injuries to the right side of his body. In three separate cases in just four days, the Bear County Sheriff says deputies were shot at on the job. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar is asking gun owners to be more care careful with their weapons. According to officials, in the incidents where the suspects were stopped, the guns they used had been stolen. Sheriff Salazar says with the new gun law in Texas, stolen weapons are becoming a big issue. It's problematic. I mean, I, I do I do see a problem with it. It is. I'm 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 terrified of it. I believe that we're going to be seeing more. I think that we're, we're going to see uh, more by the end of the year. Sheriff Salazar says he wants to make sure gun owners are securing their weapons better. Well, the United States marked the solemn 20th anniversary of 9-11 over the weekend. North Korea was test firing long range missiles. North Korea's state run news agency claims it successfully test fired a new type of long range cruise missile both Saturday and Sunday. The missiles are reported to have successfully hit targets more than 900 miles away. North Korea says the new weapon system has developed over the past two years. The Biden administration and South Korea have yet to formally respond to the weekend long range missile tests. Three Republican presidential prospects have sharply condemned President Joe Biden's handling of the end of the war in Afghanistan. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and former Vice President Mike Pence all attended a political event in Nebraska this weekend. During that event, they called the administration's conduct of the U.S. withdrawal weak. DeSantis said America's adversaries do not fear President Biden as they did former President Donald Trump. Senator Cruz commented that Biden is seen as weak and ineffective in the wake of the withdrawal. Meanwhile, Pence says the chaos and the deadly suicide bombing at Kabul's airport never had to happen. New warnings this morning about a potentially rough ride at the stock markets this week. Analysts and firms like uh, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank all out with notes cautioning investors about the possibility of the markets pulling back. The S&P 500 has already hit more than 50 record highs this year. And time now is 6.08 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Glad you're with us still to come on GMSA. New iPhone is getting a big boost in storage. I mean, huge. We're talking about that coming up in your morning consumer headlines.
Plus, the FDA is working hard to make COVID vaccines available for young children. After the break, they're warning to parents about vaccinating their kids too early. Outside with live cam, we have clouds from Nicholas over us this morning. Yeah, family or friends with uh, property down on the Texas coast, be advised it's going to be a rough couple of days. We'll get an update from meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Welcome back 612. This morning, the latest report shows that one in four new COVID cases are in children. ABC's Alex Brashe has the latest on child vaccinations. This morning, the FDA is out with a new warning to parents. Don't get children under 12 the COVID vaccine until the agency gives approval, saying in part, children are not small adults. The former head of the FDA laying out his best case scenario for when the shots will be available for children. You could potentially have a vaccine available to children age 5 to 11 by Halloween if everything goes well. Right now, children make up one in four new infections. Across the U.S., the Delta variant's not slowing down. ICU beds in seven states are running out, leaving little room for other emergencies. Ray Demonia's family says it took calls to 43 hospitals across three states to get the 73 year old a cardiac ICU bed. He died in a facility in Mississippi 200 miles from his Alabama home. His relatives writing in his obituary, please get vaccinated to free up resources for non COVID related emergencies. President Biden's mandating businesses with 100 or more employees to either require vaccinations or enforce weekly testing. The U.S. Surgeon General defending the move. Let's help us get through this, keep our kids in school, keep our economy going, and give us a peace of mind. But the Republican governors of at least 19 states vowing to fight back. This is an unprecedented uh, assumption of federal uh, mandate uh, authority that really disrupts and divides the country. Vaccine mandates already resulting in resignations at one rural New York State hospital. The number of resignations received leaves us no choice but to pause delivering babies. Further south in New York City today, anyone over the age of 12 must show proof of vaccination for things like indoor dining, gyms and theaters. Also happening in New York City today, more than 80,000 municipal employees are returning to their workplaces. Alex Preche, ABC News, Washington. 614. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, everybody. It has been a very busy morning in the traffic lab. We have a little bit of a hiccup there in our system, just getting it started here. And as we take a closer look, though, there we go, Loop 410 at Callahan Road. Uh, we do have lots going on right now that we're tracking here in the traffic lab. As you can see, things are moving pretty smoothly. Again, just a little bit of a delay there on our cameras. Loop 410 at Marbach. Things have shaped up from these shots to look nice so far. But as we take a closer look right now, if we can jump to our maps there, give us just a moment. We're having a Monday with our system here in the traffic lab. Things have, there we go, US 90 at 36. It's getting a little bit busier there in 281 at San Pedro. Smooth start from these shots, but as we mentioned, there's a few issues out there right now. As you can see on our maps, we do have a crash that just came up there off I-10 on near Wurzbach Road. Uh, Texod is reporting that that is a stalled vehicle out there. Our system is picking it up as a crash. Either which way, use some caution out there this morning, but we do have that stalled vehicle again. That was right there off I-10 westbound at Hebner Road. So as we jump though down to the bigger issues, this one here off State Highway 16 at South Zazamora, you see that as Katrina Weber just mentioned that we do have that road closed off right now as first responders are working to clear a scene that involved two women unfortunately dying in an early morning crash that happened just before five this morning. Uh, we are working to get more information, but we can confirm that two women unfortunately did die in this crash. Katrina Weber will continue to give us those live updates throughout the morning, but as we take one last look here at Trans Guide, the shots here in town look good so far, but the big issue is going to be out there towards State Highway 16, guys. Well, watch out for it. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, you have a ton to talk about this morning. Yeah, uh, especially for folks down to the east of San Antonio, uh, over toward the coast, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of rain from Tropical Storm Nicholas. Flooding is obviously going to be an issue, and there's going to be some storm surge right there along the coast as well. This morning, uh, temperature is going to be staying pretty steady. We're at 74 degrees, lots of clouds out there. A couple of showers are going to be possible this morning, especially obviously off to the east, and then 86 for a high temperature later on today, which is about five below normal. Now, as far as the cloud cover out there, that's from uh, Tropical Storm Nicholas. These clouds are being pushed on in here right now. We're at 75 degrees, 60s in parts of the hill country, more humidity. Of course, humidity came back in here yesterday and it's 
sticking around. It will stick around. We may see little fluctuations here and there, but overall this week, it's not going to be like what it was late last week and Saturday. A couple of showers, uh, even a few that are just to the east and southeast of Austin. One or two of those that were showing up in northern Atascosa County. Nothing is showing up on radar here in town, but as you can see, some of these are starting to get closer, so we may continue to see or, or at least a few more showers trying to develop here in town. A few light ones, obviously more rain down to the east and to the southeast and then closer to the center of the storm, which is down to the uh, southeast of Brownsville. As of right now, the path is going to be taking it just about straight to the north should be making land sometime late this afternoon or going into this evening. Uh, it's still just the southeast of Corpus Christi. The forecast by one o'clock today and one o'clock tomorrow morning, then making landfall. So somewhere around um, San Antonio Bay, Matagorda Bay, right around there. And again, that's going to be late uh, this afternoon or going into the evening hours. Hurricane watches are posted along the coast from Rockport up in toward Galveston, and then we've got tropical storm warnings for the coastal plain, including some of our extreme southeastern counties, Live Oak over toward Victoria, and then tropical storm watches. That includes Carnes County, uh, Gonzales counties, and then to the east and to the northeast of there, heading in over toward Houston. Of course, flash flood watches are also posted here along the coast, all the way Corpus Christi from, well, basically from Brown Brownsville all the way up in toward Galveston. Storm surge is going to be obviously an issue along on top of all the heavy rain, three to five feet there along the, the coast. So we've got a uh, forecast today. We're going to see 80 degrees today at noon, 82, beg your pardon. Uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms, more rain, obviously, east and southeast. And then a high temperature today getting up to 86 with more showers and thunderstorms. They're going to be continuing on into tonight. Now, some parts of the hill country you may not see any rain from this. We're definitely going to be on the the not as heavy rain side of the storm on the, the left hand side of it. Um, we'll still get some rain here in town, but like I said, out in the hill country, maybe nothing but along the uh, coast and down to the east and southeast two four inches of rain, heavier amounts toward the coast and then uh, kind of warm and humid this week. Showers scattered about here and there. We will prepare for the rain. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 619, about 74 degrees. And just ahead, new details about the roadside shooting of a South Carolina lawyer whose wife and son were murdered earlier this year. That's next in your GMA First Look. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals. Now introducing Insure Complete with 30 grams of protein. I've always focused on my career, but when we found out our son had autism, his future became my focus. Lavender baths always calmed him, so we turned bath time into a business. And building it with my son has been my dream job. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. You want healthy ingredients. Your cat is all about the flavor. Tastefuls has it all. I really want him to eat well, but he's just really picky. Okay, he seems interested. I think he likes it. I have a new cat food, Blue Tastefuls. One taste is all it takes. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new twist in the Murdoch family murder mystery. Clashing reports on the September 4th roadside shooting of South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. An incident report released by the Hampton County Sheriff's Office claiming there were no visible injuries. Murdoch's team releasing further details of the injuries, saying he had entry and exit wounds, his skull fractured, which led authorities to correct the report. All eyes have been on the Murdoch family since the brutal unsolved murders of wife Maggie and 22 year old son Paul this past June. Are they breathing? No ma'am. My wife and my son. And what is your name? My name is Alec Murdoch. Please hurry. You don't want to open moving. And we'll have the very latest on this unfolding mystery coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Well, we knew it was coming and it's finally here in Consumer News. New details about the new iPhone, which is expected to be unveiled by tomorrow. The iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will reportedly be the first ever to come with one 
terabyte of storage. Now, for reference, that's the same as about a thousand gigabytes. The phones are also expected to have improved cameras. Instagram is working on a new feature that allows users to create a list of their favorite accounts. Up to 30 accounts on that list would reportedly appear higher in a user's feed. Instagram says the feature is still being developed. Well, there goes my theory about the 13, them skipping right to 14 because 13 is an unlucky number. Well, I mean, they have the terabyte. Can't be that unlucky, right? R right. And the cameras are already pretty good, so I don't know what they're improving on at this point. Uh, uh, see through walls. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's possible, I guess. 624, about 74 degrees. Glad you're with us here on this Monday morning. And coming up, an overnight crash on the north side sends one woman to the hospital. Now she's fighting for her life. We are going to have those details. And San Antonio police looking for the person responsible for shooting a man while he was in his vehicle. That is ahead on GMSA. And taking a look outside at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Uh, Stephen Cavasso has been busy. We're looking there at I-10 and Hemer. We'll be right back. Outside with live cam in the weather department today, the main headline is Tropical Storm Nicholas. You're seeing some clouds and some of those outer rain bands are headed in this general direction. We'll talk to Mike in just a sec. Hi, good morning. It is Monday, September 13th. Hope you had a great weekend and now we're expecting more rain. Yeah, we got the humidity back yesterday and now we're going to be dealing with the effects of a tropical storm in the western Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, it's not that far from Brownsville right now. Mm -hmm. The path is going to be taking it pretty much right along the coast and then over toward Houston. Houston's going to get uh, smacked with a ton of rain here in town. We're going to be sort of on the, the western edge of the rain and parts of the hill country may actually not get get much, if anything, from rain. Yeah, these clouds are being uh, thrown out, kind of wrapping around that storm right now. 75 degrees, whole different story than what it was uh, Saturday morning, Friday morning when we had that bone dry air. And now dew point, of course, came back up yesterday, so we had more humidity around here yesterday, and that's the case this morning. This is some uh, just clutter around the radar site right there. We've been watching a few little sprinkly showers in Atascosa County. Now here's this one batch, which is going to be sliding almost straight to the west. It's going to be heading in toward Pleasanton, going across 37. More rain to the east and to the southeast around Cuero. Uh, we have those few showers around Carn City, some just to the north of Goliad. Victoria, of course, lots of rain, and then there's the majority of it. And you can see sort of the uh, the center of that circulation or the top edge of the, uh, the center of circulation down there around Brownsville. 60 mile per hour winds right now, so a moderate tropical storm, and it's again continued to work its way straight to the north, then it's going to start to bend off to the northeast a little bit more. It is close, obviously, but we are on the less rainy side. The right hand side in relation to the direction of travel is the, the rainier side of the storm, and that's why most of the rain will be off there. We will get some wraparound showers as we are right now, but it's not going to be um, real, real heavy here in town, maybe an inch and less than that further off to the west, but then obviously it's going to increase quite rapidly the further east you go. Two to five inches of rain is going to be possible in around Victoria and then a ton of rain over there toward Houston. Plus, we're going to be dealing with the uh, the storm surge right there along the coast. Mold is on the moderate side, low amounts of fall elm, ragweed, pigweed, and uh, we're going to be well, seeing some couple of showers trying to develop this morning. Don't be surprised if there are a few light sprinkles out there when you head off to work and school this morning and then more showers and thunderstorms. Mid 80s for a high temperature out to the west. Again, you may not see anything as far as any rain. A couple of more showers, but that storm's going to continue to move on out of here. We'll still have some lingering uh, moisture in the atmosphere, so you can't completely rule out a shower to the rest of the week. But one thing for sure, it is going to be on the warm side this week, warm and humid. More on uh, how much rain the uh Take a look at all the watches and advisories that are posted. As far as Nicholas is concerned, that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Boy, oh boy, just looking at some of those trans yeah. cameras. Yeah, roads can't get, catch a break right now. Drivers can't catch a break, that is. Mike, taking a look at I-10 to Hebner Road. Another crash reported here. We told you about this just a little bit earlier in the show. And Texas did changes from a stalled vehicle up and upgraded it to a crash. And right now you see all those road flares, which does indicate that there is a shoulder block there. This is right towards the Wurzbach Road exit there. And as we take a closer look at 
at the map. This is in the eastbound lanes of I-10 again, right at Wurzbach Road. It has been a very busy morning of crashes and stalls so far. Uh, we've been tracking it all. This one right over here, a stall reported off I-35 northbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. Again, these stalls are popping up, clearing out, popping up and clearing out. You see the pattern there, so check those vehicles before you get on the roads. But the big issue right now is going to be down here off State Highway 16 at South Zazamoto, where San Antonio police continue to investigate a deadly crash. In fact, our country, Katrina Weber is live there now and she gives us the latest information. Katrina, good morning. Well, good morning. Not a whole lot of uh, change here in terms of the traffic. The northbound lanes remain closed as this investigation continues, and that is because of this fatal crash. which happened around 4.30 this morning. Two women killed. They were inside that uh, sedan that you see there in the middle of the road. Police say they were traveling north on, uh, on Petit Jordanton Freeway when they were uh, uh, rather, they were traveling south and they were going to make a turn onto South Sarzamora. A northbound SUV then T-boned them. The police say that witnesses told them they had seen that SUV speeding and they say that they saw that SUV run the light and T-bone the car as it was making the turn. Police say the driver of the SUV then got out. They found her walking down the highway and took her into custody. They also took her to the hospital. They say she will have a mandatory blood draw to determine if perhaps she had been drinking. Again, two women in that sedan were killed. Police are trying to get more about them, more information about them, including their ages and their names. Uh, but for right now, they're still investigating this crash. So they do have the northbound lanes of the highway shut down. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Police searching for the person responsible for shooting a man on the city's south side last night. Happened in the 1300 block of Roosevelt at the Everclean Motel. Sarah Costa is live downtown. And Sarah, what have you heard from police so far? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, police are saying that they, what they know is that this started as a fight, which eventually led up to that shooting. But here's what they know so far. They were called out the 1300 block of Roosevelt around 820 last night to the Everclean Hotel Motel. Police say those two men were fighting when one of them allegedly fired the gun at the other. The victim, who was in their 30s, got in their vehicle at the hotel and drove to a nearby gas station. That's where he was eventually able to call police for help. Now, police say the victim's gunshot wound was not life-threatening and that he's going to be okay. As for the suspect, he took off. Police say they are not sure if the suspect ran away or drove off. Now, police continued to search for that shooter this morning. They did not release a description of the shooter. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, a man charged in the death of a five-year-old boy has been brought back to San Antonio. It's a story we have been following since it happened last month. 26-year-old Daniel Garcia and the boy's mother are facing a felony charge of injury to a child, according to records. The boy's grandmother claims he died at a Northeast Side Hotel back in July. Instead of reporting the boy's death to authorities in San Antonio, the couple drove to Colorado with the boy and camped near the Rocky Mountain State Park. That's where the couple buried the boy's body, then drove to Mexico and eventually Costa Rica. Last month, the boy's remains were found at the bottom of a ravine in Colorado. The couple had been in, cust had been in custody in Florida. Again, Garcia is now back in San Antonio to face charges. New this morning, one woman's in the hospital with life-threatening injuries following an overnight crash on the north side. Happened just before 1.30 this morning on the southbound lanes of 281 near Isomer Road. That's where San Antonio police say the woman crashed her vehicle into the side of the highway. Crews said they found her still in her vehicle and unconscious with a severe head injury. She was taken to a hospital in critical condition. It's still unclear what caused her to crash her vehicle. This morning, one man is fighting for his life after a road rage shooting, and San Antonio police are still looking for that shooter. This happened last night on the city's north side on West Wildwood near I-10. Officers tell us that the man in his 30s was driving his truck when a man in another vehicle drove up next to him, shot at him, and then sped off. The man was hit in the back and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Across the country, more and more children are getting COVID-19, but health experts say there could be a vaccine authorized for kids ages 5 to 11 within a matter of weeks. Until then, the FDA has made it clear parents need to wait on formal authorization. Right now, clinical trials are still underway with risks and benefits still being evaluated. Several experts say that when the process is completed, a vaccine could be ready for use by the end of October. 
After President Joe Biden's announcement that employers with 100 employees or more mandate COVID-19 vaccines, one local lawyer is weighing in on the many questions that have surfaced. Those questions include, can someone get fired who decides not to get the vaccine? Kelly Cabetta with the Cabetta Law Group says if a company puts a new policy in writing, it would be difficult to challenge. Another question is, what if I work remotely? Cabetta says vaccine requirements should be connected to the job-related duties. What's going to be interesting is where individuals have an employment agreement. It was written and signed at a time where COVID was not in, on anybody's radar. And now the company is wanting to implement a new policy. Um, and that's where it really comes down to whether or not the um, mandate or the new policy to be vaccinated is genuinely um, connected to the job. And when it comes to unemployment benefits that may be contingent on a person being let go due to not getting the vaccine, she says it's up to the Texas Workforce Commission to decide on a case by case basis. Local companies and small businesses have been through so much over the last 17 months. And with the recent uptick in cases, President Biden's vaccine mandate and the economic recovery are still left. Many are still left with questions. Marina Gonzalez, president and CEO of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, joined Leading SA this weekend to talk about it. Yes, we talked about a lot. We talked about the current local economy, small businesses, small companies, what they've had to deal with during this pandemic and what they're still dealing with. We talked about Hispanic Heritage Month and we talked about the bright future for San Antonio. We also talked about what comes next in terms of President Biden's executive order on vaccine mandates. Take a listen. Our goal is to ensure that our businesses have the resources and flexibility to continue to promote the vaccine without any experiencing any negative consequences. For example, having to pay fines that I know right now are being discussed um, per violation um, if one of their employees is not vaccinated under the mandate. Um, so we will wait and see, and we will remain uh, very vigilant in making sure that we've reviewed it and, and that we have that information ready to go for our members. You can watch the entire interview right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. for our next Leading SA segment. Guys, back to you. 638, about 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to introduce you to the Angel of the Alamo when our Tejano, Tejano Moment series continues. We'll get to that story in a few minutes, but first, Houston, Texas fans waking up very happy this morning. They watched their squad get a win against division rival Jacksonville yesterday. The final from Houston, Texans 37, Jags 21. Houston begins its season in sole possession of first place in the AFC South. Next up, Texans take on the Browns in Cleveland. Kickoff set for noon on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Cowboys taking on the Chargers. Following Dallas's loss to Tampa Bay last week, that game is Sunday, 325 at SoFi Stadium. Stay with us. We're back after this. And welcome back. It is 642. September is Hispanic Heritage Month. And in this week's edition of Tejano Moments, we are taking a look at a Tejana at the Alamo. Adina Dezavala was an activist who wanted to preserve San Antonio's history at all costs. GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has her story. She is known as the Angel of the Alamo. Born in 1861, south of Houston, where the Battle of San Jacinto happened, Miss Adina Emilia de Zavala was a Tejana who fought to preserve the Alamo's history. She was destined to uh, be a, not only a teacher, but a teacher of history. Rudy Rodriguez, the founder of TexasTejano.com, says Adina was born into a family with rich heritage, spirit, and legacy. Her grandfather, Don Lorenzo de Zavala, was the first vice president of the Republic of Texas. He says Adina was blessed to have the same energy and leadership skills her grandfather had, and she used those skills to teach others. Adina went to the Ursuline School in Galveston, the first Catholic school in Texas. Then in 1881, she received a teaching certificate at what is now Sam Houston State University. She eventually came to San Antonio to teach. We found in her archives uh, her um, certificate to teach uh, at the San Antonio Independent School. But she started focusing on historic San Antonio missions and found them falling apart. One in particular, the Alamo. She noticed the city had not improved the chapel structure and its ownership did not include the convento, also known as the Long Barracks. When the owner of the convento announced he wanted to sell it to developers, Miss Adina put up a fight that would later be dubbed the Second Battle of the Alamo. This really captured her interest uh, and it uh, was important to her to um, preserve it conserve it uh, for generations to come. Rosalind Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. 
And tomorrow on GMSA, we will hear about the extraordinary links that Adina went through to save the barracks. Let's check with Stephen Cavazos. Monday morning commutes off to a rough start, Stephen. Yeah, that's a way to put it, Mark. Uh, as we take a look here at I-10, we do have a lot of activity going on out there. A few flashing lights there. You can see uh, the shot of Transguide does show oh, that we do have a crash working in the eastbound lanes of I-10 where Wurzbach Road, uh, the exit to Wurzbach, that is, is closed off as first responders are working to clear the scene. But it also looks like we're spotting some activity over in the westbound lanes as well. But when we take a look at the map, uh, that is reported off I-10 eastbound. Again, right at Wurzbach Road, the exit there, we're seeing a slow buildup of traffic a little further down those eastbound lanes. So just use some caution this morning. Uh, but yeah, it has been a pretty rough start as we take a look around town. We do see a stalled vehicle still reported there off I-35 northbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. And we have another one here off I-35 southbound at AT&T Parkway. Again, these are popping up clearing out. So check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. We are spotting a lot of stalls for a Monday morning, which could make for a pretty difficult commute on the roads. But the big thing is going to be this crash out here towards State Highway 16 on South Zazamora on the south side. We do see right now traffic is moving in these northbound lanes at nine miles per hour. As Katrina Weber just mentioned, we do know that the northbound lanes there are closed off as first responders are working to clear this deadly crash that unfortunately did leave two women dead. So we are working to get more information on that. So be sure to stay with KSAT and GMSA for the very latest. But one last look at I-10 at Hebner. It has been a very, very busy morning. So be safe out there, guys. Let's get the latest on Tropic Storm Nicholas from meteorologist Mike Osterhage. No update as of yet. That's going to be coming out the uh, the 7 a.m. update, but it is still uh, churning down there in the Gulf of Mexico and still throwing some uh, rain in our direction. Everything coming in here from think of a giant wheel spinning and it's spinning in a counterclockwise direction and we're kind of on the, the top side of that wheel and that's why these showers are being thrown in our direction. A couple of uh, a couple little spots here and there in Wilson County, maybe one or two of them trying to move into extreme southern Bear County. Don't be surprised if there are a couple of sprinkles as you go through the rest of the, the morning commute. More rain down here to the uh, east and to the southeast. Obviously, it's just sort of scattered about and not so scattered. Pretty steady For Corpus Christi, Rockport, around Victoria, and there's more where that came from closer to the center of that storm. So the path takes it straight up to the north, and then it's going to start to bend a little bit more to the northeast. Now with this path, and as is the case with any tropical system like that, because of the counterclockwise spin, the rainiest side is on the right hand side in relation to the direction of travel. Not as rainy, even though we get some of that wrap around, not as rainy on the, the left hand side of the storm. So we're going to be on the not as rainy side here. Now there are hurricane watches posted along the coast, then tropical storm watches for some of our eastern counties, Carnes, uh, Gonzales, and then further on out to the east and then down to the extreme south. These tropical storm warnings are in effect throughout today. Flash flood watches there along the coast and it heading over in toward Houston. And as far as rain again, we're on the not as rainy side. So the storm comes right up here. Heaviest rain at the storm into the to the right side of it and then maybe an inch less than that. Some areas of the hill country won't even see any rain from this as far as the path that it's going to be taking right now. Here's the uh, spaghetti models. And again, the majority of them have it taking that path that the Hurricane Center is showing. Now, there is the chance that, that it could waver a little bit. Now, not very likely that this would happen, but if it takes a little bit more of a path to the west, then heavier rain would kind of scooch off to the west slightly more. But as it looks right now and the latest uh, models and the majority of the models, it is going to be staying well to the east, making landfall sometime late, late this afternoon or early evening hours, somewhere around maybe San Antonio Bay or Matagorda Bay. Now, as far as our forecast here in town, again, heavier rain to the east, not as much to the west, 82 at noon, showers and some thunderstorms, some heavy downpours off to the east as well, 86 high temperature today. So we are going to be on the low side of things as far as normals are concerned, about five below normal. Same thing tomorrow, a lesser chance of rain. Most of the rain is going to be throughout the day today and then tonight and in the early morning hours tomorrow. Can't rule out a stray shower here or there the rest of the week. Not very likely, though. Temperatures are going to be on the warm side. It is going to be warm, somewhat humid. Another somewhat better chance of rain by Sunday. So it's, if it stays on the track predicted right now, Mike, it looks like Houston, Houston. Beaumont, Port Arthur, going to get a boatload of rain. 7, 10 inches are uh, forecast. And then, and of course, along the coast, then on top of that, you right. still have some of the storm surge. So even 
around Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. uh, Port Aransas, Rockport, right. about two to four feet of some storm surge there, more when it makes uh, actual landfall around Matagorda Bay. And you mentioned earlier, Mike, we do have a crew on the way, Justin Horde headed yeah. the coast. Yeah, he's gonna be heading down there, and I don't know exactly what time he's gonna be getting there, whether he has anything for the nine o'clock show. I believe he does. does the, he? the game plan is, I believe, nine and noon. Okay, so I didn't know if he was gonna leave that early, but yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. they're heading off early. Yep. Thank you, Mike. We'll keep everybody posted. Our entire KSAT team right now, it's about 10 till 7, 74 degrees. And we have all felt the effects of the pandemic, both physically and mentally, tomorrow on GMSA. Why experts say COVID-19 is taking a huge mental health toll on young people. Outside with live cam, we just spoke at length about uh, tropical storm Nicholas. We're starting to see a few breaks in those clouds as the sun is coming up on your early Monday, September 13th. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday edition of GMA, the new warning from the FDA on vaccines for kids 5 to 11 years old. As more kids are going back to school this morning and the latest on President Biden's vaccine mandate and the resistance to it. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live on the south side at the scene of a deadly crash. This is Highway 16 and South Sarsamora. This is where the crash happened around 4.30 this morning. Still an active investigation going on, but police tell us that two women in that sedan were killed in this crash. Their car was T-boned by an SUV uh, as they made a turn. Now, police say witnesses told them the driver of the SUV had been speeding and possibly ran a red light. They found that driver wandering down the highway. She got out and left after the crash. Police took her to the hospital to have blood drawn and see if possibly she was intoxicated. But again, this is still an active investigation. They say that they are still looking into everything they've been told by witnesses. At this time, they do have that driver in custody, though. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, it's been a very busy morning on the roadways. As you can see, this shot at Transgata I-10 at Hebner Road. Let's take a closer look from the shot right now. We do have first responders working to clear a crash over here in these eastbound lanes where you see those road flares set up, and that is because of that crash occurred right at the Wurzbach exit, so that is currently closed. We saw some activity over there in the westbound lanes, but looks like that was a stalled vehicle, so pretty busy morning over there off I-10, but that crash was reported there in the eastbound lanes at Wurzbach, and you can see the lanes are being impacted right now, but the big thing is going to be that crash Katrina just talked about where we're seeing the impact of traffic moving at 11 miles per hour. Mike, it has been a very, very busy morning, but we're going to be tracking it all. What's the weather looking like? Well, not bad here in town right now. Things are fairly dry. Later on this afternoon, it may get uh, a little slow going, may get busier just because of uh, some rain in the forecast. 75 right now, some 60s in the hill country, and we've got a couple little showers. Notice how one of them is now starting to move into uh, southeastern Bear County right there about 37, and then more rain down to the southeast closer to Nicholas. It is still continuing to work its way almost straight to the north. We're going to be up to 82 at noon and then 86 for a high temperature today. Heavy showers and thunderstorms in our eastern counties. Uh, we're going to be dealing with obviously the storm surge right there along the coast. Tomorrow, a little bit of rain and then just kind of staying warm and humid this week. Don't forget to download our free KSAT Hur Hurricane Tracker. Have a great day. We'll see you back at 9.